So for those of you who have been watching the open source releases, we just shipped uh, Dash 3.0 uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm going to talk a bit about some of the new features in Dash 3.0, why we're excited about it, uh, and hopefully you folks are too. Uh, we had a few release candidates that were out uh, leading up to the release of Dash 3, which shipped in mid-late March. Um, so if you haven't updated yet, make sure to get on that. There's a lot of stuff in there, and um, we're stoked. So the first thing you'll notice when you upgrade is we have a refreshed DevTools UI, which you'll see in the bottom corner. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the DevTools UI, um, that's great. But we're hoping that more people get to use uh, the tooling in here. The callback graph and the error pop-ups are obviously super useful. And we're also adding uh, you know, some more visibility for the version of Dash you're on and notifications for when a new version of Dash is available. Under the hood, we've modernized the framework a bit. Um, we've updated the default React version. So for component developers, this should be really helpful um, to improve the, you know, you know, take advantage of modern React components in what you're building, uh, modern React tooling, um, and make sure that that's available to all Dash developers without them having to set a custom version of React. Um, this is We're also exploring uh, React 19 support looking forward. Uh, we'll usually be a little bit behind um, on purpose to make sure that there's some time for adoption. Um, so we're pretty excited about this update, and uh, I hope that our community and especially the component developers are as well. The focus on performance with this release, um, rendering performance is improved for projects that have many Dash components. When you update a Dash component in your layout with a callback, you will see that it's not going to re-render nearly as aggressively. Uh, it's going to avoid re-rendering where possible. So this should lead to performance improvements in applications that are really component heavy uh, and have a lot of callbacks inside of them. Um, so just by upgrading, you should see that performance benefit. The main feature in Dash 3 um, that I'm really looking forward to seeing how our community takes advantage is uh, Dash Hooks. So Dash Hooks is a new system for controlling the app lifecycle of projects uh, all in Python. Um, we're recommending that you build your Dash Hooks as Python modules and you know, really encouraging sharing those uh, within Teams and of course with the community as well, um, especially with PyPy. So for folks that have never built a Python package before, a dash hook may be a good opportunity to build your own Python package and distribute that on PyPy and, of course, share it within the Dash community. Um, we think it's a pretty cool system that's super dynamic and uh, the kinds of stuff you can build. So to really get into it, um, there's a bunch of different places inside of Dash that you can control um, the lifecycle. You've got setup hooks, layout hooks, routing and callback hooks, uh, as well as error and index hooks. These sound complicated at first, but for those of you that are familiar with Dash, a lot of this will, you'll recognize and you'll see some of these patterns are really honing in on some of the ideas that we introduced with all-in-one components um, and Dash plugins, uh, which were even earlier. You can also inject information into callbacks, inject scripts and style sheets into your projects uh, without having to ask users to build code. So let's dig in a little bit. I'll share my screen and we can take a look at um, what Dash Hooks looks like in practice and, and show a few examples. So I've got a project set up here, um, and this is running Dash 3. And you can actually see it looks like in this environment, I'm on an older version of Dash. We've already shipped two patches to Dash 3 to uh, address some issues with the original release. So again, if you haven't updated, do so. But it'll prompt me to update, and I can check out the latest details if I open up the uh, Read Details button here, which is just going to send me over to the releases tab. Great work, Philippe, uh, shipping this one. Um, I can also skip or remind later, all that good stuff. Now, this is a really simple app, but what I've done is I've built a hook here called custom header. And what the custom header hook is, is um, you'll see it's a layout hook. So hooks are always decorators, uh, not always, but mostly decorators. And in this one, uh, the layout hook, it's going to, I can write a function, which will take the layout as input. And that's actually the original app's layout as it was written. Um, I can consume that layout, modify it if I want to, and update it and uh, spit that back out to the UI. So this is all set up as a module. You'll see I've set this up in the init file. I actually also have a, a setup file as well. So I could publish this out to the world if folks wanted to use it or if I wanted to share it with my team. Um, but because it's in the init uh, file, if I just add in this import custom header to the top, 
you'll see that the UI actually will update um, in place. So as the Dash developer, I never had to add anything to my layout. I never had to adjust my app other than just adding this import statement up top. Uh, and I have this slick new header that maybe I wrote, maybe someone else on my team wrote and shared with me um, as a module. So depending on how you write this, there are other patterns for building these hooks as well. So let's look at a slightly different example. This uses the same header system, but instead of setting it up on import, I've actually set it up as a function. So if we look at how the hook file is set up, I have this add header function. Um, and when I call it, it's going to execute the hook and inject the style sheets. So now I can pass parameters in to add header. And if we take a look here, this example actually has an editable title. Um, so let's change that to welcome dash three. And there we go. We've got a customizable header component. Um, this is a really simple example, but hopefully it gets the creativity going a little bit to see what she could do um, in terms of layout hooks. Let's look at something a little bit more uh, sophisticated. So the last dash hook that I built is a hook called Beautify Layout, a really creative name, I know. Um, and in the app example that I have, it's really simple app. It's just a list of graphs. I haven't added any layout or styling or any kind of functionality to this project. It's just a list of graphs. There's nothing really interesting going on here. So if we look at what it looks like when I run it, here it is. It's a set of graphs. Um, they're showing some global financial data. Vaguely interesting. It doesn't look that great. It's not quite ready to share yet. Um, so I'll import my hook that I built and save it. And what this hook does is it actually will take all of the content of my layout, introspect it, um, find all of the charts, and rearrange them into a prettier layout. Um, and that rearrangement is actually done. I've set it up so it'll use Dash Design Kit, which is our enterprise library for building layouts. So again, as the Dash developer, all I had to do was add in this import statement, and my whole app is actually completely rearranged. And you'll see I've also added functionality here to automatically add titles to these charts. So super handy. Now, I built this hook. I could send this out again to a colleague. I could send this out to a friend. Um, and then they can take it, add it to their Dash app, and then, boom, their Dash app is going to be a lot more slick looking. If we look at how the hook itself works. Again, this is a little more complicated. It's got this chart analyzer system, which is going to give me the um, which is going to give me the new titles. Um, it also you can see it's pulling out the charts itself themselves, and this is where the hook comes into play. It grabs the layout, extracts all of the graphs out of this layout, and will put them back in place with the right uh, UI and the right titles. Um, so. You, know, you can get even more creative with this, depending on how you want to set this up and what kinds of layouts you want to build with your project. Um, again, with this one, as the Dash developer, you know, I built a really simple app. The only things in my layout are graphs, and just by adding this import statement, I'm able to build something much fancier. So we hope this is a, a really great system for you know expanding on the, the ways that you can share and reuse code and projects in Dash uh, without having to you know, write stuff inside of your app every single time. Um, this should be a really powerful system for reusability and, and project expansion. So that's the live demo. I'll go back over to the slides now. So these were some ideas that I had and I built, um, which I just shared, but there's a lot of other stuff you could do with dash hooks. Um, because we have callback hooks, you could reuse a data retrieval function every callback. You could build a hook that pulls data from a specific source and add it to a callback um, and make sure that every callback is now containing that data. That, that would be using the custom data hook. Um, you could add an AI chat window to talk to an app for insights. Uh, that would be using the layout hook. Um, so I could write a little UI component that will take the layout as input and lets me chat with that in an AI. You could set up style sheets and scripts to be imported with a Python API. So for those of you who are using external style sheets a lot and want to make those redistributable without having to memorize links, you could use hooks to set that up. You could add a watermark on top of the top of your app uh, if you're sharing it inside of a, a private context. 
set up templates. So if you have one app layout similar to the AI enhanced dashboard that I was showing, you could reuse that across many projects uh, without having to rewrite that code and keeping the actually backbone layout of your project really simple. So like I said, we're really excited to see what our community uh, members and our enterprise customers come up with. Um, I think I'm just scratching the surface. I think there's a lot of people that are way more creative than I am with this, so I really can't wait. Um, we have great documentation written by our documentation team for Dash hooks. You can see the complete list of hooks, a lot of examples, and also tutorial on how to set it up into modules. Um, so if you've never built a module before or a Python package before, um, there's a little bit of uh, context there that should make it easier to get started. Of course, we're always encouraging sharing your hooks in the community forum if you have never shared there before. Um, get on there. Our community moderator, Adam Schroeder, is fantastic. Um, there's a lot of good stuff that happens in there. And keep your eyes peeled. Uh, we may have a hooks-related challenge uh, in the future. So give it a whirl. Um, take Dash 3 for a spin. We're really excited uh, for what's to come.